Hi guys, my name is Dan and I work as an applications engineer here at Farrett. What you'll need for today's Farrett Academy lesson, as a very minimum you'll need a piece of A4 paper, but if you have some cardboard, uh, placemats from a dining table like these, and some blue tack, uh, we can make today's experiment work a lot better with those materials. So if you, if you have a hunt around the house, try and grab to get those together. And um, yeah, we'll, in the next section I'll show you how to make a sort of demonstration of what we call a floating floor. Hello everyone, welcome to today's Farrett Academy um, lesson, I suppose it is, episode. Um, this episode is going to focus on uh, a principle that's, that's quite central to everything we do at Farrett. And that principle is elasticity. Now, aside from being quite a tricky word to say, what is elasticity? Elasticity is, is how stretchy and springy things behave. You see common examples of elasticity in everyday items like, uh, like rubber bands. Or even, uh, you know, simple dish sponges. You can squish these things and they immediately change back to the shape they used to be. Or with a rubber band, for example, we stretch it and it naturally wants to go back to how it used to be. Now, elastic items um, are generally quite soft ones and that's kind of why we rely on them here at Farrett. What we do with our uh, elastic items, things like this block of rubber here, it's, it's a lot bigger than, um, than a small elastic band, but we use them to stop vibrations from happening. The example we're going to give you here today is how to create your own, uh, what we call a floating floor. Now we can start off in a pretty simple one with an old piece of scrap paper that we don't like, perhaps some old meeting notes. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to look to take, uh, we're going to make springs out of this piece of paper. That sounds a bit strange, but uh, bear with me on this one. If we mark off about an inch of the paper, um, there we go. And then if you've got the help of an adult, by all means get some scissors at this point. Otherwise, uh, just a ruler on the side of it like this, lined up to those two points and you'll be able to tear the paper. So this gives us one piece of paper, and here's a second one that I've made earlier. What we can do with these now, is if we fold them over one another, line them up in the corner, and then just go back and forward until we get to the top of them. I'll uh, finish this one off pretty quickly, and then I'll show you the, uh, the rest of the ones that we've made. What you'll do with this paper is turn it into an elastic material. I mean, you'll see exactly what I mean about that in one second. So there we go, we've now got to the end. And this piece of paper now has turned into our spring. So what we have there, if we, uh, if we hold the paper down and press it, you'll see that it naturally wants to go back to where we left it. Now this experiment will work with uh, four, four paper springs, such as these that I've made earlier, one, two, three, four. And, uh, our elasticity piece of paper, if we fold that over, it almost becomes the deck of our floor space. And now we can rest that very carefully on top of those springs. And you see that as you apply pressure, the whole system wants to, to go back to where it used to be. Without the springs in place, what would happen is as we press it, you can hear there's a noise of the paper uh, and the force that we're using with our finger goes directly into the table. Now over here, I have my, uh, my slightly bigger model. And in a second, I'll show you exactly how this works. But here we have um, a much more solid floor that's no longer a folded piece of paper, but is now a um, sort of coaster or a placemat from a table. And the springs I've used here are actually slightly bigger ones than are made of cardboard. Now, if you have um, an old cereal box, these, these are pretty ideal to make out of that, but you, you probably will need scissors to produce those. I've also on this one got a piece of blue tack just to, to help my springs stay on the bottom of my floor space. And if we stick them on like that there, you'll see that we've now got four springs that basically create a floating table for us. Uh, and I'll just change my camera view and then you'll, uh, you'll see it in action. Hi again, everyone. So now that we've uh, got our floor here, the spring you on, as you can see, we've still got the, uh, our cardboard springs underneath this floor. We've got the same type of floor here, but obviously there's nothing underneath it. There's no, uh, no elasticity and there's no, um, no material trying to stop any vibration from happening. Now, if we tap the top of this one, here there's quite a muffled sound, versus if we tap this one, it sounds quite a lot louder. Now that's just sound in the air. What you can do at home is if you put your head on the table while you do this, you'll be able to notice a really big change in the sound that you can hear coming through the table. So if I put my head down this way, and I can hear the sound in the air, but I can't really hear any sound in the table. And on this side, 
with my ear against the table, it sounds a lot louder because all the energy I'm putting into this floor goes straight through the floor and into the table. Whereas on this side, and we see as we press it, because the table bounces up and down, what actually happens is the energy I'm putting in by tapping the table is taken up by our elasticity, by our springs that live in the corners of the, uh, of the floor space. Now we can take this one further and test it with um, objects, such as this, uh, this cat toy that I borrowed from my cat. And you see that when I drop it on this page, uh, this table, sorry, what happens is it bounces up and down and resists it a bit. If I drop it on this side, you notice it's a lot louder and the actual ball itself is forced to bounce up and down because there's, the system is stiff. There's nothing elastic about it. Um, a final test that you can do is if you get some items that are quite tall, but very stiff and strong, they're not elastic. These don't change shape if I try and squeeze them. We can then use these as the isolators or the ones that won't work underneath our solid floor. So you might have been thinking, well, it's because this is lifted off the table that it works that way. It's not necessarily the case. This one is now still lifted off the table, but because there's springiness in this floor and no springiness in this floor, the same trick where you listen through the table will happen with this system because the material that we've got between the floor space and the table is solid and uh, it doesn't have any elasticity. And so that's why the use of elastic materials, springy materials, such as our, uh, our humble elastic band, why it's so very central to everything we do at Farrett. Um, yeah, I hope you've uh, enjoyed this, this little lesson um, and let us know how your own uh, floor models go.